Good day everyone. Today we're going to take a look at 10 interesting facts on Jonathan Archer from the TV show Enterprise. I really did enjoy this show, but thought the finale was not that great. Scott Bakula does a great job in the captain role. Now, let's get into it. Number 1. Jonathan Archer was born in 2112 to warp scientist Henry Archer and his wife Sally Archer in upstate New York, but was raised in San Francisco. Number 2. One of Jonathan's earliest inspirations for space sciences was a copy of the Cosmos A to Z, which he got on his 8th birthday in 2120 from his father. Jonathan spent hours staring at its front cover, depicting the Arachnid Nebula. His fascination for space led him to wanting to serve in what became the United Earth Starfleet from an early age. Number 3 Prior to Zephram Cochran's disappearance in 2119, Henry took Jonathan on a tour of the Warp 5 complex where he met Cochran, Tasaki, and other scientists working at the facility. Jonathan later revealed he was not aware of the significance of his father's work at the time. Also in his youth, Jonathan achieved the rank of Eagle Scout and Boy Scouts. During his time there, he earned 26 merit badges, including a wilderness badge, which he received in a rainforest in New Zealand. As an undergraduate in California, Jonathan was an accomplished athlete in the sport of water polo. During his senior year, he participated in the 2134 North American Water Polo Regionals. Number 4. Tragically, in 2122, his father started suffering from frequent hallucinations and pain for years, sometimes not even recognizing his own son, the result of Clark's disease, dying two years later. However, the relationship that Jonathan shared with his Henry's friend Emery Erickson strengthened and Emery became like a surrogate father to him. Number 5. As a commander, Archer was one of the four test pilots in the NX program in 2140s. In 2143, he and A.G. Robinson became not so friendly rivals in wanting to become the first to fly the NX Alpha. Though Commodore Maxwell Forrest ultimately gave the assignment to Robinson, Archer had spent the most time in the flight simulations and got the engines to 92% efficiency. Robinson, however, was determined to break Warp 2. He did, with Archer serving as the flight director in NX Control, but the NX Alpha was destroyed. Robertson managed to get out just in time via an escape pod. The incident led Starfleet to suspend the NX program at the urging of the Vulcans. Robinson blamed the destruction of the craft on the flaws in the engine Archer's late father had designed, which eventually led to the two of them coming to blows. Eventually, however, Archer reviewed the data and conceded that Robinson had been right. After devising engine modifications to compensate for the flaws, Archer and Robinson, with the help of Lieutenant Charles Tucker III, took the NX Beta on an unauthorized field test. With Archer at the controls, the craft achieved a new speed record of warp 2.5. Archer and Robinson were grounded for three months for their actions, but were successful in convincing Starfleet to resume the program. Number 6. Later, in the 2140s, Archer was on Titan as part of the Omega training mission along with Tucker. When Tucker's environmental suit malfunctioned, Archer saved Tucker's life by preventing him from taking off his helmet on Titan's surface. Number 7. In 2150, the final selection for the captain of the Enterprise took place between Captains Robinson and Archer. Vice Admiral Maxwell Forrest gave the post to the latter, although Captain Gardner was originally considered to be most suitable choice by Ambassador Saval. Archer's quarters aboard the Enterprise were located on E-Deck. Number 8. Archer's command of the Enterprise ended in 2161, after which he signed the Charter ratifying the Coalition of Planets, which ultimately led to the formation of the United Federation of Planets. Number 9. After the founding of the Federation, Archer went on to serve in the Starfleet Federation. 
at his retirement from Starfleet, he was Chief of Staff at Starfleet Command with the rank of Admiral. Archer became an honorary member of the Endorian Imperial Guard in 2164. Federation Ambassador to Andoria in 2169. Served as Federation Councilman from 2175 to 2183. And was ultimately elected President of the United Federation of Planets in 2184. A post which he held for eight years until 2192. Number 10. Archer earned an impressive list of commendations during his career including the Starfleet Medal of Valor with clusters, the Star Cross, and the Federation Citation of Honor. I really did like Captain Archer and loved how they explored the beginnings of the Federation. Could have done without that finale though. Anyways, did you enjoy Enterprise? And specifically, did you like Captain Archer? Let me know in the comment section. Take care and have a great day.